Guys, what's up? How's it going? In this video, I wanna, I wanna give some love to the Atari Lynx. This is, when I talk about, think about retro handheld consoles, this is probably one of the most nostalgic for me. I, I'm very sentimental when it comes to the games I grew up playing, right? And the one here, actually right here, is the original one I grew up playing as a kid. I bought this, or my parents bought it for me back in 1989. I was only eight years old. I remember they going go to Lionel's Prey World. I think I got it for the holidays that year. And it came with California games, I'm just being blown away at the colors because this is really kind of the first colored backlit handheld when it came out, right? Game Gear didn't come out until a couple years later in 1991. So this beat Game Gear to the market by a couple years. Game Boy had came out a couple years previously in 1989. Uh, obviously, well, that wasn't color until the Game Boy Color came out years later. So what's cool about the Lynx is it's got 496 different colors to choose from to display. They're not, they're not all displayed at the same time, but it's got a, it's a very colorful system. And it was one of the first systems, not just handhelds, but systems ever to really have the zoom and sprite look, right? So games will see that the sprites actually zoom in and zoom out. Later on, the N64 had the Mode 7, and they would do that as well, right? Take a pretty good advantage of it. But the Lynx really was the first one to do that. The downside about the Lynx is that the battery life was terrible, just like the Game Gear. Battery life, we're looking at about four to five hours max on the six AA batteries. Game Gear was slightly less. It was about four to uh, three to four hours. Lynx 2 came out in 1991. Battery life was better by about an hour with this model. It slimmed down. It's a little bit more bulky. It's got the, the rubber grips on the back. We'll take a closer look at each system here in a second. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show like some gameplay for the top three games that I recommend for the Lynx. So please stick around for that as well. Uh, now, when this came out, now, unfortunately, before I continue, this one, my original one, you can see that the it's pretty worn out, right? My hands, my little hands back in the day, really played this for hundreds of hours. I love this handheld, played it all the time. It doesn't work today. And that's pretty common with these nowadays. You'll see that they don't work very similar to like the Atari, Atari Jaguar CD, right? Uh, a lot of those don't work. And so that was that's unfortunate. I, I, I don't have it in my heart to throw this away. It's very sentimental to me, though. I do have a model here, same model that does work and you can see it's in a lot better shape. So if you're looking to purchase one, especially like sites like eBay, uh, you're gonna look to spend about $150 US dollars on the low end to about $250 US dollars on the high end, depending on, on uh, how good condition the, that particular system is. But beware, because I noticed a lot of them on eBay particularly are sold as is or uh, for parts. So a lot of these are broken down. Make sure if you're gonna look to get one, you make sure you, that it does work don't, don't get as is, because most likely it will not work, okay? When this actually came out to retail, it retailed back in 1989 for 179 US dollars. And today's, if we include inflation, that's about 385 US dollars today. So it wasn't certainly cheap. Games weren't cheap when they came out either. Only 71 games officially came out. But when Hasbro eventually took over Atari, they opened up to a bunch of people just to develop games for it. So there's actually quite a few games that were developed, quote, homebrew games. Uh, Zaku is one, I'll show you, that's probably one of the best homebrew games for the system. It came out in 2009, a really fun shooter. I'll show you some gameplay uh, here in a second on that. Uh, overall, I love the Atari Lynx, and Atari wasn't necessarily the company really to develop the system. Actually, started development for the Atari Lynx started in 1987 by a company called Epix, and they had a handheld called the Handy. And uh, what happened, Epix, when I think of Epix, they, they, did, they published a bunch of games. I think of like California Games, for example, is one that they, they published uh, for the Commodore 64 or whatever. A couple ex-employees for the Amiga uh, actually went on to create Epix and, and they developed this thing. They developed this handheld. Uh, it wasn't called the Lynx at the time. Uh, they were running low in funds and funding and they, they approached Nintendo, they approached Sega, they approached many companies and Sega and Nintendo said, no, we're not interested in, in, in build, making a handheld. Nintendo was already working on the Game Boy. So uh, Atari actually uh, bit and they, they purchased it and they, they licensed it as the Lynx and they stuck with uh, the cat theme because later on they would have the Jaguar. I uh, was still waiting for the Cougar, uh, which would have been like a system geared for older women. That never came out, unfortunately, and <laughs> just playing. But uh, really cool handheld overall though. Uh, very underrated, undershadowed by the Game Boy. Game Boy battery life lasted for 15 plus hours on four AA batteries opposed to three to four, four to five hours on this thing. So I remember, I have fond memories of my parents go to Costco or Price Cup at the day. And they'd buy huge amounts of AA batteries and I would just burn through them all the time. Uh, so let's take a closer look at 
the handheld itself. I'll show you some gameplay. Let me know what you guys think of the links. Please leave a comment below. Thank you for subscribing, guys, and let's take a closer look. Okay, so let's dive in and let's take a closer look at each version. You've got the Model 1 on top here and the, the version 2, Lynx 2 on the bottom. Lynx 2 were retailed for $19.91. They dropped the price almost in half. It was $99 US dollars. Came bundled with a bunch of games. They lowered the price uh, and it helped a little sales a while. It helped sales a little bit. Uh, estimates are that in total in the, you know, between 1989 and 1995 when Atari discontinued the Lynx that about estimated about 3 million of these handhelds were sold. You compare that to the Nintendo or even the Game Gear, it's significantly less. So they were definitely uh, third fiddle when it came to uh, handheld market, but Lynx is considered the first uh, backlit colored handheld system, so I give them credit for that. Here's a Model 1. So you can see they've got the D-pad here, you have the on and off, you have the options, restart, you can flip, if you hold both these right here, you can flip the system like this, and you can play actually left-handed, which is unique. I'm not quite sure of another system that can do that, even uh, from when this came out or today, I don't know. Uh, you have the, this is the brightness on the bottom here. It has a headphone jack. It is mono sound in this model. Uh, you have this Com Lynx, and I think another reason why they, they called it a Lynx, because it's a play on words. Of course, it's a cat theme, but it's also a Lynx. Um, and you have the power. So there was an AC adapter you can purchase, plug it in, save on battery life. But at that point, it's not really mobile because you can't really take it on flights or anything like that, right? Here's where the games are plugged into. These are what the games look like. This is Zaku. This is the homebrew game I was talking about, 2009, came out. And they, they're kind of like cue cards. They're kind of the size of, they're thin, obviously. Uh, they're the size of like a Game Boy game. Uh, and you plug them like this on the side. And you close it in. So kind of like mini hue cards, like you'd see on the PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16. These are the battery life. Uh, there was a ribbon here that you pull out. This is with the batteries, six AA batteries. You got, of course, your, your, serial, your number here, uh, made in Japan. Interesting enough, even though Atari is a US company. Uh, so let's go and power this on. I don't know how well you can see it. I'll play through my camera here. Let's see the volume right here, top. It's got a lot of, it's pretty loud. That's adjusted, adjusted brightness. There you go. Can you try to see it a little bit better? That thing's loud. So it does, that, that's the max sound. So yeah, it definitely puts out a lot of sound. So it is shooter, it's fun. Really well done homebrew in my opinion. Now if I pause it, I can actually flip it, hold this button down. Now I can play like this, which is really confusing because I'm not used to playing with my D-pad on the on the, the right-hand side, but you can get the idea. Um, the screen, they definitely, it's a 3.5 inch screen. On the Model 2 here, they made it thicker, they made it fatter, and they, the screen is the same size, but the screen is better. Uh, battery life does take, it does take six AA batteries and the battery life is better. You have your on-screen here. I have Batman Returns. Both adjustments are here now. The brightness is on the top. That's the maximum. So it's not quite as loud as the Model 1. Still loud enough, though. This is a really fun Batman Returns. Really fun. But same thing, I can, I can flip it like this and play that if I wanted to. I can uh, also... Backlit turn off, so this is different. I can turn the backlit off to save battery life, although you can't really see the game at that point. I'm not quite sure the point of that, to be honest. Uh, the D-pad is much thicker. They have these rubber grips on the back now too. The game actually comes on the top, like now similar to a Game Gear. It's got stereo sound output now, so if I head jack, that's, that's huge. And the batteries go on the bottom here, so this pulls out and this is where the batteries are. So they definitely redesigned it completely. They did a lot better job with it. So. Now I'm going to show you uh, some other top three games that I recommend for Lynx. Thanks for watching, guys. The first game I recommend is Blue Lightning. This is an early game that came out for the Lynx by Epix. And really, right when you start the game, a really good use of the, the zoom and sprites I was talking about before, uh, that the Lynx was really the first system to do that. This game is also ported to the Jaguar CD later on for the Jag CD, which is a lot more uncommon, obviously. But I had a lot of fun playing this game. I still do. 
Uh, you have five lives in the game. You have these missiles that are limited. You can lock onto your enemies. Um, so it kind of reminds me of a classic arcade game, although this was never ported from arcade or anything like that. There were a lot of arcade ports to the Lynx. Altogether, 71 games came out for the Atari Lynx, but there's been a lot of unlicensed games since, a lot of homebrew games as well, uh, which I showed you before, uh, Zaku, Zaku being one of them. But I love the sound effects in this game. You can, you can spin as well. you got to watch out because enemies can attack you from behind. Um, just amazing use of graphics and color. That's one thing I really appreciate about the Lynx is there's a lot of good use of the colors on, on screen. In my opinion, you can't mention the Lynx without talking about California games. This was actually an initial packing game for the Model 1 I purchased. So this game I probably played the most of any other game. There's four mini games in this, unlike most California games have been ported to a lot of different platforms. It's missing roller skating and all those classic ones. But BMX is one of my favorite ones. Uh, the controls on this particular port of California games is a lot more unique than you would get on the, the PC port or the console port during the time. Uh, this is probably the, one of the most fun BMX games. Surfing is another good one. I really love this game. Uh, very unique because in other California games, you go left to right and you have to land in exactly the same angle that you took off on. Otherwise, you'll wipe out. This one, you had a lot more freedom as far as your landing goes, and it made a lot more fun. Uh, again, music's great, had the feel of California. Uh, really highly recommend this, this particular port of California games. Surfing, definitely a lot, really, really hard as well. Of the three mini games, I'd have to say Half Pipe is by my least favorite. It is my least favorite. I hate this one because I can never control understand the controls. I'd always wipe out no matter what. I always crash. As a kid, I still, as an adult, I still can't figure out this one, to be honest. But I do love the graphics. I love the zoom in, zoom out. Uh, but this is Footbag, or they call it Footbag. I always grew up knowing it as Hacky Sack. And the goal is to, to get as many points as you can, hitting the ball, the, the bag as many times in a row. You get extra points for, for attacking the bird and making the bird spin out of control. Uh, I love, again, use of... The graphics are really cool. It looks like the Golden State Bridge there in the background. A really fun game. This is probably my second favorite mini game in California games. Uh, but my first one is definitely BMX. Last game I'm going to recommend is Rampage. This is a great port from the arcade. It's been ported to a lot of different consoles and computers. But this is by far my favorite home port. Uh, you have Larry the Rat, which is exclusive. He's an exclusive fourth character in this version, bottom left corner. I love playing as Larry. And... IGN back in the day gave this a 9 out of 10 for the Lynx. It's one of the better games on the system. Graphics are colorful. They're fun. Uh, it plays very similar to the arcade. The sprites are actually large. If you ever play like the NES port of Rampage, the sprites are super small. This version, they're actually large. Uh, you can see the attention detail that they put in this particular port. So, great game. But there's a lot of great games for the Lynx. I do highly recommend it. Let me know if you have a Lynx. Let me know what games you recommend in the comment section below. Thank you so much for subscribing, guys. I really appreciate that. Thanks for liking this video. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. And, of course, game on.